Good evening. I'll call this meeting of the Cartersville City Council to order. If you will please stand for our invocation and pledge. Let us pray. The creator of all people, of all things, we praise you as we are blessed to live in a place of beauty, sharing in the heritage of the people who seek to know what it means to live in community. Help us to be good stewards of these gifts, that as servants to one another, we bring forth the best in our common life. Guide us to make wise decisions. Amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Keeling, the roll, please. Carrie Hodge, Ward 1. Here. Jay Stepp, Ward 2. Here. Louis Tonsmeyer, Ward 3. Here. Lindsay McDaniel, Ward 4. Here. Diane Tate, Ward 5. Here. Lori Pruitt, Ward 6. Here. Thank you, Connie. The gang is all here. We have got uh, the minutes of our regular council meeting from August 20th to approve as the first item on the agenda. Council, you've had these well in advance of tonight. Chair will entertain any additions, uh, corrections, or if there are none, a motion would be in order. Make a motion to approve me. Second that. All, all in favor to keep by saying aye. 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 The minutes are approved unanimously. I am very happy to uh, start us off with a proclamation tonight uh, in recognition of the, it says it's the new president of Georgia Highlands, which will be official uh, next, next week, but uh, Don Green is here and I've got a proclamation that uh, I'd like to read and come down and present to you if that is fine. And, and if it's not, you drove all this way, you're gonna have to hear it anyway, and I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> Uh, this uh, says, whereas Georgia Highlands College was founded in 1970 as Floyd Junior College on a single campus in Rome, Georgia, and initially enrolled 545 students, Georgia Highlands College now serves over 5,300 students throughout Northwest Georgia at five separate campuses and sites in Rome, Cartersville, Marietta, Dallas, and Douglasville with a regional impa economic impact of nearly $119 million. And whereas Georgia Highlands College is a fully accredited state college within the University System of Georgia, offering over 40 areas of study in both the associate and baccalaureate degree levels at one of the most affordable rates in the state. And whereas Donald J. Green began his duties as the fourth president of Georgia Highlands College on September 8th of 2014, and whereas Georgia Highlands College will hold an inauguration ceremony for President Green at the Floyd Campus Gymnasium on September 18th, 2015, and whereas on the evening of that night, Highlands Inauguration Gala will be held in honor of President Green at the Cartersville Campus Student Center and to help raise money for student scholarships. Now therefore, I, Matthew J. Santini, Mayor of the City of Cartersville, do hereby proclaim September 8, 2015 as Georgia Highlands College Day in the City of Cartersville in honor of President Green's inauguration. I will say before I present this to you that we've met on several occasions and from day one the energy uh, that you've brought to the campus, uh, the way that you've cared about the, the staff there, and uh, uh, I think your background in manufacturing and, and the, the way that you are thinking about moving Georgia Highlands uh, is going to be of even greater impact uh, than, than the, they're going to see greater things than they ever have. And so I appreciate in the, in the short time you've been here uh, your enthusiastic leadership and, and, and your willingness to partnership with, with industry and uh, to really make good things happen here in our community. So we're appreciative of that. So. That being said, I will come down and present this to you. In fact, I'm going to take a picture. You see how well dressed you are, how well dressed I am. Oh, yeah. Is that right there? First of all, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council Members. Uh, I am blessed to be here with our campus dean, who many of you probably know, hopefully all of you know, Leslie Johnson. We are, I'm speaking on behalf of both of us, uh, we are humbled and honored to receive this proclamation. Thank you so much. We're also very proud to say that this fall, Georgia Highlands College is up 7% in enrollments, so we continue to grow and build. It's our intent to come alongside of all of you and our local schools and our local businesses because what we really want to do is grow the economy 
and increase the standard of living for all the citizens of Cartersville. So thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And, and I will officially dismiss you as you have a ride up to watch your son play some high school football. So have a safe travel. We'll see you next week. All right, our next item is uh, uh, public hearing for uh, Z15-03. Mr. Menino, if you'll get us started with that. Thank you, Mayor and Council. This is a second reading. This is, as you had mentioned, Z1503. This is a 25-acre track located along Mission Road. Um, Planning Commission did recommend approval of this application, and there have been no additions or changes <coughs> since the first reading. Um, originally, uh, Mr. Watkins did represent this case. He is out of town at this time, but the applicant is present. I think that makes us all happy. Any questions for Mr. Mino at this point? Thank you, Randy. I'll open up a public hearing relative to Z15-03. Anybody wishing to step forward to speak for or against, I may do so at this time. And seeing none, I'll close the public hearing for Z15-03. Council, uh, your opportunity to have further discussion or make a motion. Motion to approve. Okay. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Uh, Mr. Grove, I believe you got the next one <coughs> regarding the pawn shop ordinance. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this deals with the uh, metal recyclers and pulls them out of that. They're regulated separately by the state. Okay. No changes since the last time. No. Uh, if there's any questions, now's the time for them. If not, a motion would be in order. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Mr. Porta, you got the next few. <clears throat> yes, Mayor. The first uh, item on there is re Festival Zone for the Chamber Barbecue. It's coming up at uh, October 8th on Thursday night. They like to hold, hold it downtown in the Founders Oak parking lot area here. And uh, according to the ordinance requirements, they basically have to have some Festival Zone resolution approved by the City Council in order for them to serve alcohol sales between 5 and 8 that evening. Again, it's going to be a roped off based on the ordinance. We're going to meet the requirements of that and recommend approval of the resolution. Thank you. Any questions for Dan on this item? I would like to note that Josh Brock is here representing the chamber. We appreciate your presence tonight. Thank you for being, allowing me to be here. I appreciate it. And just one note, it is not alcohol sales. They're not selling alcohol. Thank you. Any other questions? Dan, I guess I just had one question. Uh, given that the gas department has moved into the old fire station one uh the chamber will be thinking about tents in case of i mean they have a plan for yes that, they, they've been made aware of that situation and they have i believe they have a tent what i was told from the chamber they have one available actually i had a conversation with josh earlier this week and that they were actually planning on using that area oh, anyway okay. so it works out well Motion to approve. Second. And motion to second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Uh, Mr. Porter, the next item, please. The next item is a festival zone for the Bluegrass Festival, which will be held on Saturday, October 17th. It uh, be held between 11 a.m. and 8.30 p.m. with the alcohol sales running from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. And this is going to be in the same area as well as over in the pavilion area um, as well because it's going to be there's going to be bands over the new, newly constructed pavilion as well as over in this area and to Diane Tate's question basically they'll be using a tent or possibly set up under the bridge for the band over in this area okay questions comments or motions motion to approve second all in favor indicate by saying aye. aye aye motion carries unanimously the next item mayor is the resolution for a national endowment of the arts grant application this is through the DDA. They recommend approval of this. Basically, the grant, they have a preliminary budget uh, for items within the grant they're looking for. It's a $200,000 grant with a 50% match. The DDA understands the, the funding capabilities of that. Uh, if the grant is awarded, they won't even find out until next April. And then after that, uh, they'll have until September, I believe, to start the process of going through, the, going through that and seeking funding. They're looking to get local funding if they do get approved. There's also some items on there that they're looking forward to bring arts in the downtown. Uh, the next slide, Rebecca has a couple pictures of art walk examples because they want to have an art walk. They want to also improve benches in the downtown area, the, the garbage cans, as well as doing some additional um, improvement in the downtown area. 
So this is the, the next slide shows some examples. They want to have a Harmony Park, which is in their downtown master plan, which is part of the Founders Oak. They've talked about uh, in the downtown master plan, a Harmony Park. And that's just some examples of some couple cities that have those, where they have basically it's a musical instruments that, that anybody can play. So that's just some ideas that, that are generated. They're, they have talked to the Cultural Arts Authority, and uh, they're going to be talking to the um, Historical Preservation Commission, trying to get everybody on board. If you know if the funding is accepted, that there'll be a committee set up to work through this and make sure that uh, everybody's in agreement to pursue what's on the grant application. Okay. Dan, when will they know about? The It'll be about April of next year. April 16th. Yes. Yep. Any other discussion? If not a motion's in order. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor to get by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. The last time I had mayor was the Matthews Garage vehicle repair. We had one of our city vehicles involved in an accident. It was our fault. Uh, the cost of the vehicle repair is $6,750.91, and we have to pay them, and then we'll get reimbursed by our insurance company, less the $1,000 deductible, which is our actual out-of-pocket cost. Mm -hmm. So I recommend approval of this repair cost. Questions, comments, or motions? I have a question, but I don't want to uh, make it through. How long have you been using uh, Matthews? Uh, uh, for as long as I've been here, we've been using them to service our vehicle for body shop repairs. Okay. I I'll tell you something about uh, this little lady. I don't want the public to know it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, then. And then I wouldn't say anything right now. <laughs> that's, that's your prerogative. Um, any other discussion? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor to get by saying any aye? Aye. Okay. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, Mr. Sanders, you got the next one, please. Thank you, sir. Mayor, Council, this is a bid award item we advertised for the local maintenance improvement grant resurfacing project. We, uh, it's to pave six city streets in Cartersville. Those are the streets. We um, had three bidders. The low bidder was Bartow Paving Company at 276524 20 CW Matthews was the second bidder at 341879 And Northwest Georgia Paving out of Calhoun was the third bidder at 357-507-20. Uh, the grant, the LME grant was for 178 and the required match was 53. So our funding level for this project was 231,000. Asphalt has went up about $10 a ton since last year. That's partly due to um, demand and uh, scale of the project. This is a um, smaller project than the one we last year. We let two LMIGs together, mm -hmm. and so um, so we had a lot more a bigger project. So we got a better price. Plus, um, the economy has picked up a lot, so, and there's a lot more work out there. So the price of asphalt has gone up. So that's the reason for the um, forty-five thousand dollars shortfall. And so we're asking for two things tonight. One for you to award the project to Barto Paving Company, and then secondly, for our guidance on um, either cutting streets or using 2003 SPLOS funds to make up the difference. Okay, thank you. So any motion that would be forthcoming uh, after any discussion uh, needs to include uh, that direction. We can have that discussion before a motion is made. That'd be probably preferable, but um, Conversation seems to be that all the streets on that list seem to need the repaving. That is that is correct. There's a there's a process that y'all have for determining which ones need to be paved, and yes, sir, those we, are all well within the range of needing uh, attention. Yes, we rate the roads and give them a score based on the deficiencies, and these are the lowest scoring roads in the city at this time. And <clears throat> I think from our vision and. We're a good bit behind on this, right? I mean, as far as how much we're spending towards paving in general uh, to keep up with sort of our our road base, right? That's, that's accurate. Yeah. yeah, that's very accurate. Yes. What have we looked at? What we're going to do to 
to help that out in the future as far as funding? I mean, I know you're looking at funding mechanisms here, so you know, my question is in long term, what is our plan? Or are we still sort of just mulling that over? Well, um, you know, I, to, to be on a 15 year recycling program, uh, I, I need about $750,000 a year uh, and at current dollar values. So um, to be on a 12 year program, it was just right out of me and it was 900 and something thousand. So uh, yeah, it's close to me, a million a year. Um, so, um, you know, our LME grant is only about 178. Now that will go up with the change in the excise tax. We've been told to expect that to go up about 50%. So our LME grant next year may be, you know, 230. But um, that difference either, right, right, that would neither, you know, um, need to be put into the public works budget or, um, you know, possibly in the, in historically what we've done is put, put that in um, the SPLOST. Yeah, if the SPLOST were where it should be in 14 and it's not, like we had 3 million designated for that, but obviously we haven't hit those numbers. Th that that's correct. 3 million over six years. Yeah, Sp SPLOST is really a, a, an ideal funding source for that because, um, you know, we don't have a revenue source for roads we don't have toll roads or, you know, we don't charge rates for people driving on the road. So um, the, the SPLOST is a, a very good funding source. Man, y'all are lucky to be living down here because it was up north, the freezing thaw would be killing the roads. So. That's what you're about to what are you? blessed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Georgia, Georgia is very, we're very lucky that we've got uh, very good construction materials as far as aggregates. Yeah. And, um, and we do have, um, <clears throat> um, not as many freeze thaw cycles, which is what causes the deterioration. Yeah. So, our our roads do last, hold up a lot better than they do in other parts of the country. Tommy, I've got a question. Uh, when they increased the weight of trucks, and then they did the double deck of trucks, was there any more allowance for uh, local streets? I mean, obviously that has a bigger impact. Right. No, uh, no ma'am, not. Not really, and that's why most, um, you know, public works people were opposed the last time that um, the legislature chose to up the uh, maximum weight um, because it does create more wear and tear, not only on the roadways but especially on the bridges. It's it's uh, it's exponentially harder on the bridges because those trucks hitting that approach slab on the bridge um, and, and the 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 bridge joints themselves. It it's um, it it really um, causes them to um, deteriorate more quickly. It can even make one obsolete, can it? I mean, the yes. weight bearing is... Yeah, it can cause it to have to be posted where mm -hmm. you have to post it and restrict the size of truck that can use that bridge. Thank you. We're looking at a 2003 SPLOS fund availability. We all have it in front of us. The products that are listed on this piece of paper, are they the only ones that are still outstanding that haven't been completely finished? Or is there money in other projects? There's no other money. That's it. Yeah. So these projects listed, no that's problem. the deficit we have to make those projects complete, correct? Or at least to get it moving. Well, I, I had a discussion with him a little bit earlier. They haven't, they haven't all been paid. We've set aside the amount that you're Looking at. Looking at relative to completion of the original contract plus change orders A and B. Then the 53 set aside would be to match the original LMEG amount. The 25 would be the CSX flagging thing that they wanted. So that's that's what makes up all the expense. So you've got a balance of 464 and none of that's been spent yet, but you're obligated to spend it. Correct. And then there's 105 left after that. Uh, he's short 45,000. Uh, Dothet Ferry, if you do the archaeological, is short 90, so there's a net of probably, what, 35 there maybe? Mm -hmm. Short overall? Well, I wasn't here earlier, but I think I've, I've been able to pick up pretty quickly sort of where we are. And, you know, we, 
you're in a rock and a hard place. I mean, we, we got roads that need to be paved, and I'm all for it. And then we got a road that, in the future, we got to have. So we've kicked the can on it. Uh, eventually, we, I mean, I think as a council, we're going to have to the dot that ferry can. We're going to pick it up and figure out a way to fund it. Uh, but this is important. I, I mean, I think that we between now and next year, let's really put our heads together to figure out. You know, let's get these roads up to speed. I mean, I, I won't even say in some of our surveys it's been even noticed that our road. Well, it's bit. germane uh, that at the end of the agenda we've got some stuff that talks about that survey okay. stuff. Yeah. Well, I'll make a motion, uh, two part motion that uh, we approve uh, the contract with the local guy, Parto Paving, uh, and that we uh, balance this funding out of the 2003 SPLOS. Uh, duly noted that we all or we're going to have to make a decision at some point about, about the ferry and pull some money over to get that paid for, but uh, I'll make that motion for you. Second. Got a motion is second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Tommy. Mr. Jones. Next item, please, sir. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I think we're all familiar with our uh, screw pump saga, and it is ongoing again tonight. Um, you'll remember, I believe it was June 18th, uh, was the what kicked off our, our little uh, episode here with, with these particular items. We had a bearing failure. The bearing failure allowed the pump to come out of alignment, which caused a gearbox failure, and that's what we're here talking about tonight. We've had the bearing put in, discovered the gearbox problem, and now are needing to replace that part as well. Um, we took bids. Uh, Rome Electric was the low bid at $25,682 and would recommend your approval of that. And as we mentioned earlier, if, if it makes anybody feel any better about this, we're replacing a piece of equipment that has been in service since 1974. So at least we got our money's worth out of the, the so first one. All that's left now is the nameplate. The nameplate and technically the motor and switch gear could <laughs> blow up. So, you know, that's, that's about the only thing left on this one. So you're not going to come back to us for another 30 years for another one of these, right? Was there four, closer to 40? Make how, how, about, <laughs> how about not for this one? I got seven more out there. <laughs> All right, very good. If there's no other questions or comments, a motion will be in order. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor, to get by saying aye. 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 Thank motion you. carries unanimously. Mr. Hossbrock, you got the next item, please, sir. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Uh, <clears throat> the electric department uh, needs a... Uh, transformer of 2500 kva transformer large large transformer and we've bid this out to four different uh, companies and we receive bids and and we not only look at the price per unit which is the purchase price but we look at a, a, a something called the total ownership cost and that that factors in load losses and that's uh, that gives you a cost over a 30-year life of a transformer. So we get those two factors back, and we determine what's the best best value. Uh, in, in this case, uh, we are we're asking you to go with uh, the purchase of the Ermco transformer, which didn't did not have the low uh, purchase price. It wasn't the lowest purchase price, but it had the lowest total ownership cost of a. $15,000 less than the nearest competitor over the, over the life of the transformer. So the, uh, we're recommending that, the, uh, that you guys uh, approve the purchase of the Ermco transformer for a, for a unit price of $31,725. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? And if not a motion. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Chief Culpepper, you get the next two, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. The police department has, uh, we sent out bids for new police vehicles. <clears throat> we had originally, in our budget, had planned for five, and we've reduced that back to four. Uh, we sent them out on the city's website on request for bids. Uh, and again, we received two bids back, and, and that's a perplexing issue for us. We have notified all our all the vendors that we've used in the past uh, by snail mail, so that they would know how to get these bids. Uh, so I can't give you an explanation why so few bids come back, just for full clarity. But we did receive two bids: one from Robert Lohr and one from uh, Alan Jay out of Wachula, Florida. 
The one out of Florida was uh, a total of a 102, 380 for the vehicles, and Robert Lohr was at 105, 618, which is uh, $3,238 difference. Robert Lohr is higher than the one out of Florida, but because of the, the good service record that we have on factory warranty work, uh, getting it turned around and getting the vehicle back in service, we feel that this is a value plus quote, and we would like to recommend that uh, Robert Lohr be approved uh, for that bid. We would also ask that you uh, allow us to spend up to $45,000, which puts the, for equipment and installation, which would put the total amount up to 15618 in total cost for four vehicles. And we, we anticipate going somewhat under that budget as well. And, and this is an asset forfeiture. Yes. Thank you. Any questions or discussion on this item? <clears throat> if not, a motion's in order. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Next item, please, Chief. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is It's time for to uh, have the equitable sharing agreement and certification signed and sent to the Department of Justice. That's commonly referred to as an asset forfeiture program. Uh, it, it indicates that uh, in the period that ended June the 30th of 2015, we had received $1.1 million in asset forfeiture, and we had spent uh, nearly $710,000 on vehicle and equipment that we would not have otherwise been able to have budgeted for. So we're asking for authorization for the mayor to sign this so that we can get it in and be on time with our reporting. Okay. Any discussion? And if not, a motion. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor and by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. <clears throat> Hop on up here, Greg. I've seen some things before, but I've never seen anything of a crutch is trying to get with that. Sir? Is it sympathy for crutches? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, if I'd have, I'd have brought both of them, I'd have thought that <laughs> Uh, Mayor and Council, this is a change order uh, for Southwell Engineering uh, for the Leak Mounds at Ohio Riverwalk Link, which is our grant. You can see we've got the, uh, it's about a 1.8 mile trail beginning at Sam Smith Park here at the, uh, at the bottom and ending at our canoe kayak launch uh, just about the middle. It's, it's the red trail. Uh, but this change order uh, involves uh, several things that, that is required for this project to go forward. Uh, it includes uh, the stuff for the, the bridge that will be uh, adjacent to the old iron bridge next to, uh, uh, next to uh, well, across from LADS. Uh, and it also includes uh, money for the, uh, the, the clomer, which I'm not up to date on those, uh, uh, those items, but flood, uh, the, flood the plane stuff. floodplain stuff. Floodplain, okay. Uh, the uh, it's uh, the change orders for twenty five thousand four hundred eighty dollars. I recommend approval of this. This will be funded out of our recreation bond money. Okay. Any questions? Mm -hmm. If not, a motion. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries mm -hmm. unanimously. Why don't you go ahead and do your okay. Uh, we've got a little piece of the citizen survey. As I mentioned earlier, it does have some things that are germane, germane to infrastructure. Okay. All this is on the website, correct? The yes, it is. is. Uh, these are responses to the question, the city's infrastructure needs some attention in the areas of water, roads, and utilities. Please select one statement from the following that best reflects your view. The top one is uh, support of SPLOST. The second one is I'll not support any tax increases or financing to support these improvements. The 14% one is property tax. And the other one is uh, I'm open to other ways to raise money. Okay. Uh, this <coughs> one. Yeah, I'm sorry, I got a question. I yeah, back it up. Those four options, was that part of the, the company that did the survey or did we come up with those four categories? No, we came up with it okay. in conjunction with them. We, okay. were, we were kind of trying to figure out. We got a pretty good mix here when, mm -hmm. when we go through them that okay. will give you kind of an indication of what people think. Thank you. This is in response to how important, if at all, each of the projects and issues will be for the city to address over the next five years. Uh, the top piece is road and bridge improvements, and there you've got the red bar is very important and blue is essential, so you've got a combined 81%. Uh, 
Downtown redevelopment design is next to 53%. Below that is quiet zones of 52. Renovation and redevelopment of Fire Station 1 Civic Center, 48%. Upgrade to Sam Smith Park, 44%. Downtown parking deck, 41 And airport, 39 hmm. Uh, this one is, please indicate to what extent you would support or oppose a one mill tax increase of $40 per $100,000 of property value to cover the cost of the necessary improvements. Uh, and these change a little bit when you put it in that light. The top one, again, these are strongly to somewhat support. Road and bridge improvements at 71%. Water and utility infrastructure improvements at 71%. The only difference between those two is the level at which people strongly support them. It looks like roads and bridges a little bit more. Um, third one is increased improved parking downtown at 58, upgrades to Sam Smith Park at 47, and airport enhancements at 39. Um, and those were the open ended questions. That's all I've got. It's good data. Thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. Those are good questions. Any discussion or comments on those? So uh, like only what, 25% of those that filled it out were the only ones against any kind of. Um, yeah, the blue one. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, I won't support it. I won't support In any it. Way. Yeah, 25%. Yeah. Yeah, good observation. <clears throat> Thank you. The um, uh, Mr. Sanders, would you mind coming forward and giving us a update on or sinkhole situation. Sure, uh, since we last met, we have received the report from the geotechnical engineers, and, and that's what we have on the screen here. Can you scroll to um, sinkhole three and four of the pictures? Um, we've also had two additional sinkholes that um, we'll show you pictures of. Um, we've called them sinkhole number three and sinkhole number four. Uh, you can go back one. Yeah, there you go. So the top picture is uh, sinkhole number three, and that happened behind the existing uh, gas department building between that and the, um, the railroad ditch. And sinkhole number four was about uh, 60 feet north of sinkhole number three, and it was actually in the railroad ditch. You can see the pictures. Uh, uh, so we... Um, is that water there? Yes. Yeah, the bottom one. Yeah. Yes, water was in sinkhole number three. We uh, uh, pumped it out, and um, uh, sinkhole number three was a, a more of a uh, typical sinkhole. It had a clearly defined throat, and so we plugged the throat with uh, a type three riprap and then put um, graded aggregate base on top of that, uh, and then filled the rest of it in with dirt. So it is, it is uh, filled now. Uh, there was a, um, the gas department's equipment shed had to be torn down. Um, there was a shed on the back of the building. You can see it in the picture on the left. You can see the support, the columns that held up the roof. Uh, that did have to be removed. Yeah, right there. And um, on sinkhole number four, CSX took care of it. They mobilized <laughs> in a big way and uh, they filled it. <laughs> plugged it off also and then capped it off with riprap and even uh, concrete. They, uh, they sort of paved, uh, paved over the riprap cap and both of those are um, holding up right now. Both of those are typical, uh, more typical than uh, sinkhole number two was. You know, we had some uh, sliding at sinkhole number two and we never really found the, the throat. Um, in, in, in these we were able to seal those off so we we feel a little bit more confident that these won't come back versus um, number two. Um, I have a question about sinkhole number four. Uh, when I was out there that morning, I guess the width, the, the diameter of it was about six feet? Yes, sir. How, and of course it was filled with water because it was down in that ditch. Any indication, how, how deep did they ever determine that thing to be? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, the interesting thing about that. There it is, it was about six feet deep. We were six happy. feet deep? Yeah. Yes. So not that big at all relative to these others. We were having a discussion yesterday, though, as we went through some tabletop stuff on this. It's possible, and it's probably speculation at this point, that four is when that ditch loaded up, fed water into the other ones. It might be the reason some of that washed. 
Yes, and it, and it could even be the reason for all of them. It may have been there and we didn't know it um, because uh, big swings in groundwater table is what you know causes, takes the limestone mm -hmm. out, the karst material away. So um, it, you know, it is possible that, um, that that hole could have been where the groundwater was uh, getting in. Uh, but you know that is speculation, but it is a it is a possibility. We are monitoring the groundwater levels out there right now to try to get an idea, uh, and we have seen some pretty significant fluctuations, and we're trying to figure out you know what the cause of that is. But um, but for now, the uh, the site seems to be um, pretty stable. And that just so you know, the the pipe that's across uh, sinkhole number three. <clears throat> that was the relocated sewer line from when sewer when sinkhole two or one or two made its appearance, right? That's and, correct. And so you had to relocate that. Um, basically, it came in Monday, and, and the sinkhole had gone right over the stuff where we rerouted the the original. There was also a sewer line <clears throat> in the sinkhole mm -hmm. uh, that. Um, that was uh, disrupted and so the water department uh, Bob's guys came and not only did they reroute the um, the temporary uh, fix from sinkhole number two but they repaired the uh, the sewer line that was uh, torn apart that was uh, in sinkhole number three yeah and since since that's happened and these have happened they've kind of blocked Bob's access anywhere else we're thinking maybe about going back on the original line but hardening the sewer line and, and, and putting it putting it back where it was because going around Go it's kind of, kind of blocked off by these at the mm -hmm. bottom. Those are some of the pictures of the repairs. And Did you, you said going? that we're, we're 80,000 into this? Yeah, we're about 80,000 out of pocket, cash out of pocket so far for, um, for the repairs. Of course, the big item that's left is, uh, is Bob's item. Uh, as far as uh, a permanent resolution to the sewer if situation. If we go back on the original alignment, we might be able to save some money, but we're well under the half million that, that you all approved. And we lost a building, didn't we, Sam? I haven't lost it yet, but uh, with this new sinkhole showing up on the back of the gas building, we pulled all of uh, Gary's folks out and moved them into the fire station. Uh, still don't know anything yet from insurance, right, Dan? A question I've been asked <clears throat> from multiple citizens just around lunch, breakfast, and whatnot is, you know, something like this happens and let's say it's a million dollars or 1.5 million or, or you know and right now we've approved 500 but it, you know right now who knows what we're going to end up spending where does that money how much do we have set aside for that is that just coming out of well uh, you know when you, have, when you have the reports and we show you how much cash we're setting on and, and what the budget is doing there are different reserves when each of in each of the funds there's some fairly significant ones in gas. Bob's got a little bit, so we thought we'd draw from the two of those since they're the two areas that are primarily impacted. Now, there's some other things going on down there that you ought to be aware of. Um, there's a small building up at the, can you put the aerial back up? There's a small building up at the front of it that, in which uh, a lot of our fiber equipment and uh, wiring, I guess, for one of another one, other word uh, is located and and this report has shown that there are voids under that building as well that's that's becoming a concern um, if that goes down it basically takes down all of our internet and phones and any any kind of data that we have uh, so we're doing some contingency planning relative to that but there's three quarters of a million dollars of equipment in that building it, uh, could you turn back to the geotechnical summary at the end? If, uh, a couple of things I would point out to you. Uh, in that first paragraph, you know, they say there's no way of knowing if the four sinkholes are interconnected, but they suspect that the sinkholes could be connected through a deeper karst feature. And then in the second uh, 
you know, the main thing that jumps out at me in the geotechnical summary is in, in that second paragraph um, near the bottom, they say future sinkhole activity is likely. So. Mm. Well, I've got to think at some point we stabilize the site and then we can see what we've got to work with. Um, that may be a while coming and we're hoping that the <coughs> building at the front of it doesn't fall into the, into the hole. Tommy, can we get a copy of this? Sure, we can uh, send that out to you in an email. Well, well it's really, it's a big file. Um, we'll figure something out though. If, if uh, we may have to print it out for you because it's about 25 megabytes. Most of your email servers probably won't take a file folder that big. And to reassure you and the public, we are going through contingency planning right now about what could happen on that site and talking to public safety and all the utilities about uh, you know, just what the concerns are there and how we plan for that. So. Tell me why I suggested the report without all the appendix. I mean, that took up more space than the report. We can do that. Yeah, without all the uh, backup information, it's about three and a half megabytes. It's the size that you can email. Pages of photographs, of stuff from, you know, historical photographs and things. Yeah, those are big files. I'll, I'll just mention again, uh, thanks to your department and all the departments that are working diligently to, to stay on top of all this. And again, another big thank you to the county for their partnership and helping oh, yeah. us with equipment and getting these things uh, yeah. filled. And they've saved us a substantial amount of time, energy, and, uh, and money at the same yeah, time. Yeah, that was their track hoe in the pictures of the repairs. They brought it back out again, and it was probably, um, I think it was uh, on our side about three additional days for the sinkhole uh, number three. Thank you, thanks for the thank update, Tommy. Any other business that needs to come before council this evening? Have Pioneer Day starting uh, tomorrow night. Uh, yeah. All Labor Day weekend with fireworks Monday night. Fantastic. Thank you, Greg. Anyone else? Happy Labor Day. City offices are closed Monday. And if you have your garbage service on Monday, keep it out on Tuesday. If they don't get it Tuesday, they'll get it Wednesday. If they don't get it Wednesday, give me a call. <laughs> Fab is going to play tonight. Oh, yeah. They are. <laughs> I hope they show up. Me too. Enjoy the show. Up last week. Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Adjourn. Get it around. <laughs>